House of the Dragon Episode 9 has just released on HBO Max, and in this episode, we get the fallout from Viserys' accidental final words surrounding Aegon being the new king, and a much larger focus on Alicent and the Greens in King's Landing. In this spoiler review and analysis, I'm going to be breaking down and giving you my thoughts on House of the Dragon Episode 9, entitled The Green Council. Before I get into it though, if you want to see more videos on Season 1 of House of the Dragon, then don't forget to support this upload by giving it a like rating, subscribing to the channel, turning on your notifications, and following me on social media via the links in the description. But without further ado, let's dive into my review for House of the Dragon Episode 9. So the penultimate episode of House of the Dragon Season 1 doesn't include a big time jump, and instead, it picks up right where Episode 8 left off. Viserys has died, and the transition of power has left us with a potential bumpy ride between the Greens and Blacks. This episode focuses a lot on Alicent Hightower, and gives us a moment between her and her father, where she tells him about the late King's deathbed speech, in that he wanted her son Aegon on the Iron Throne, which of course was a misinterpretation of the late King's confused words, where he thought he was talking to Rhaenyra about the prince who was promised. But that misinterpretation doesn't matter because Otto Hightower and a lot of the small council have already planned to go against Rhaenyra and put Aegon on the throne, who we learn is currently missing beyond the Red Keep. After last episode's connecting moments between Rhaenyra and the Queen Consort, Alicent is now completely torn, not wanting there to be a war with the Blacks and Rhaenyra's life being threatened, alongside her own moral standards being brought into the light too. Penultimate episodes in Game of Thrones usually include blockbuster-like portrayals of warfare, or it typically shocks viewers with devastating twists and turns. But episode 9 is quite the strange one that yes, has a big moment with a big dragon at the end, but one that for the most part shows us an interesting set of developments within one side of this upcoming civil war. Next week is going to focus on the Blacks and specifically Rhaenyra, Daemon and their kids, but this episode gives us much more on the High Towers and what the crowning of the next king really means for the ongoing tension. The focus on Alicent is quite the surprising one, in which we get scenes with her that are more sympathetic following the 24 hours after she learns of Viserys' death. Her emotion towards his death is real, but there's also the determination that she has to oversee his wishes, which again, we know is a case of misinterpretation. Even if Viserys' final words were not misinterpreted, we also know that Otto and the small council would have gone against Rhaenyra and put Aegon on the throne anyway. So it's great that the writers have made Alicent more layered with this instalment, and really honed in on the idea of great characters that this franchise and prequel show have done so well, even if we don't get the most action-packed of penultimate episodes that we are quite used to getting. And the opening small council scene really does set up this kind of approach well from the outset. Otto reveals Viserys' apparent final words to them, as well as their plotting, but we also see those not involved in this plan, including Lord Beesbury and Queen Alicent herself. Lord Beesbury is outraged and calls the move as treason, saying, I am six and seventy years old, I have known Viserys longer than any who sit at this table, and I will not believe that he said this on his deathbed alone, with only the boy's mother as a witness. Sir Kristen Cole then takes it upon himself to seat Beesbury, and in doing so, he smashes his face onto the table, killing him instantly. The Lord Commander Westerling orders Kristen to put down his sword, and while he refuses, Queen Alicent orders him to follow those orders. It's at this moment where Otto says that no one should leave the room until this is sorted, and this is where Alicent brings up Rhaenyra, saying, The former heir cannot of course be allowed to remain free free and draw support to her claim, she and her family will be given the fair opportunity to publicly declare Aegon as the new king. She goes on to say, 
play that Rhaenyra and Daemon would never bend the knee, and in turn, realises that Otto and members of the council's plan is to have them both killed. And this is what begins to create a big rift between the Greens currently in charge. Otto asks Westerling to take his knights to Dragonstone and murder them all, and in response, he refuses and says that he takes orders from the king, but right now, there is no king. He takes off his cape, leaves it on the table, and with that discussion going poorly, the only thing left to do is to tell Aegon that he's about to be the new king. The problem with doing that is, again, what I mentioned before, in that no one can currently find him. Aegon isn't in his chambers, and Sir Eric, the Kingsguard Knight sworn to protect him, doesn't know where he is either. So the new hunt for Aegon that a lot of this episode transitions to is what gives the opportunity to multiple knights to focus on. And that means with the current tension between Alicent and Otto's side of the greens, they each send out a duo to search for Aegon. Alicent sends both Kristen Cole and Aemond into the city, giving us quite the intriguing duo. Kristen is vengeful, but he believes in Alicent, and Aemon, on the other hand, being someone who has studied the kingdom's history, can beat nearly anyone in a sword fight and rides the largest dragon, decides to help even if he believes he is more deserving of the crown. When it comes to Otto Hightower's side, he sends identical twins in Eric and Eric of House Cargill to equally gain control of Aegon and bring him back. And speaking of Otto, there was also a moment where he assembled lords and ladies in the Great Hall and forces them to bend the knee to the new king, even after swearing their banners to Rhaenyra. Most of them do bend the knee, but one lord and lady say they won't break their oath to Rhaenyra and the guards escort them out of the Great Hall. We later see that exact lord hung dead during Rhaeny's escape and it just hints at the cruel succession that Otto wants to push with Aegon. So when it comes to both set of knights and fighters searching for Aegon, we get some interesting developments and new understandings surrounding some of the things we saw last week. Sir Eric and Eric go to the fighting den that the prince is known to visit frequently, and while we learn that this place is basically a trafficking centre for peasant children to fight, they see a small silver-haired boy that is apparently one of Aegon's many bastards. So after last week's rape incident, we learn that Aegon has been up to much worse, again reframing the decision to make him king as all the more worrying. But while Eric and his brother are there, they are approached by a mysterious woman who says that she knows where Aegon is, and that same character takes the brothers and Otto Hightower to her master, who turns out to be none other than Messeria. Messeria, who was also Damon's interest in the earlier episodes, had returned in episode 8 and revealed that she had informants deep inside the Red Keep. She now goes by the name White Worm and promises to take them to Aegon if Otto promises that the children of the city will stop being used for entertainment in King's Landing. He says that he'll look into it, and therefore, Eric and Eric are sent to the Great Sept to find a kidnapped Aegon underneath the pillar. But once they get outside with the future king in hand, they're confronted by Sir Criston and Aemond, who have been following the brothers ever since, and eventually a sword fight breaks out. Sir Criston beats Eric, with Eric watching on from the sidelines, and while Aegon tries to run away and shouts that he shouldn't be king, Aemon catches up to him and says that he did hope he would disappear. Aegon says, I have no wish to rule, no taste for duty, I'm not suited, and suggests that he should leave on a ship and never be seen again if his brother lets him go. Aemond obviously would like that to happen, but it's when Sir Criston interrupts and reminds them that the Queen awaits the Prince's return that this idea is completely flattened. So after Alicent beat her father to capturing her son first, she later visits Otto and tells him straight to the face that their hearts were never unified and that to her, she's been a piece on the board that he's moved around since the start. Otto says that Rhaenyra and her family need to be sacrificed for the stability of the realm and that his daughter is being weak by not understanding this. She says that she now has Aegon, so they'll proceed as she sees fit and in the next day, 
day, she names Kristen Cole Lord Commander of the Kingsguard and states that Aegon will be made king and take Aegon the Conqueror's crown and sword. Most importantly though, she makes it clear that there will be fair terms sent to Rhaenyra that she can accept without shame. This moment, along with the small council scene at the beginning of the episode, was probably my favourite in this instalment because it really demonstrated the conflicting view that Alicent has after mistaking Viserys' words and it sets up the conflicting views between her and her father really well. It did lead to a quite disgusting scene between her and Laris, where he masturbates to her feet, but again, we do learn something here too. Laris tells her of the web of spies in the Red Keep, one that Otto is also aware of, and he also mentions that her lady-in-waiting is one of those spies and that there are many more like her. So to stop this, they would need to kill the Queen Bee, which we now know as Miseria. So it looks like Alicent pays for Laris's intel and she gives in to his foot fetish, which again is all the more discomforting. Coming now to the ending events of episode 9, we learnt earlier on in this episode that Alicent, like others, believed that Rhaenys should have been the ruler over Viserys. She paid her a visit before, informing her that the king died, and asked her to support Aegon over Rhaenyra. While the Valerian's pact with Rhaenyra has resulted in bad things for Rhaenys, she says to Alicent that the queen consort still toils in the service of men, like her father, her husband, and her son. She says that Alicent desires to be free, yet she makes a window in the wall of her prison. And she leaves her with the question, have you never imagined yourself on the Iron Throne? Alicent seems to reject it and tells Rhaenys to call her once she's decided, but there won't be much waiting around for Rhaenys, because on the morning of Prince Aegon's ascension, she is woken up by Sir Eric, who says he cannot go along with this treason, making us realise why he didn't help his his brother when he fought Kristen Cole earlier on in the episode. He wants to escort Rhaenys out of King's Landing and on the way out, we see Maseria's old headquarters being burned down, which is again the work of Laris. Before Rhaenys can make it out of the city though, she's relocated by lines of people charging towards the dragon pit to see Aegon crowned as king. And while this is happening, Aegon rides with his mother towards the ceremony and complains to her that Viserys never wanted him to be king and that he's only being given the crown because because it's what his mother and Otto wants. Although Alicent believes that the king changed his mind, Aegon laughs at her knowing it not to be the case. She pleads with him to reject this and not kill his sister. And once inside the dragon pit, Aegon is introduced and led through a line of knights onto the stage, being named the new king with the crown placed on his head. The people cheer once he raises the sword, but like every penultimate episode, we can't end without an incident at a big event. Apparently, Rainy sneaked below the dragon pit after being driven there, got on her dragon melees, and burst through the floor to everyone's surprise. Nearly everyone inside runs out of the sept, except for the king, the high towers, and the greens, and while Rainy's and her dragon approach them, she decides to do the unexpected. She could have easily easily burnt them all alive, but instead, Rainy's dragon lets off a big roar, and she flies out of the dragon pit and onto Dragonstone. So next week, with the focus on the Blacks, Rainy's will now give Rhaenyra the warning of the threat against her life, so that she can start building forces in the fight for the throne. And with all of that, we know that the Dance of Dragons will truly begin. So what are my overall thoughts on this latest episode of House of the Dragon? Well, the show has been really great all season, and while this episode isn't as strong as the last one or a few others, I think it was great to really see and develop the perspective of the opposite side. While Viserys stole the show in episode 8, it was Alicent Hightower's turn in this latest instalment, and after being pushed around the board by Otto, she's playing a more prominent role in the events to come. She pushed she pushes Aegon for king like Otto, but she wants to show more honour when it comes to those 
those who are firmly planted on the opposite side of the table. And to show that, I think it really delivered in displaying all the grey that we love within this world and its characters. By keeping Rhaenyra and Daemon off screen, Episode 9 did a great job at building suspense for the finale, and seeing the black side of things in reverse to what we've just seen here will be all the more interesting. There were a few weak moments, like everything surrounding Maseria and Laris, which I think were being set up as good manipulating points throughout the season, but the outcome were scenes that were just not as fascinating as those with, say, Alicent and Otto. And yes, it was weird to have this kind of an episode be the penultimate one, in that after all the build-up, we'd expect episode 9 to have the biggest moments of all. But while that wasn't the case, they did deliver with the dragon scene towards the end to really make you feel that war has now started, and all the complex build-up with the high towers leading into that scene only adds to the excitement going forward. There's no turning back, and while characters like Alison wants things to be less troublesome, there are just too many factors and players who want to seize the opportunity for power. I think it did its job in demonstrating this, and it especially builds the anticipation for the finale, which I'm sure will be an eventful one to watch unfold. But that was my spoiler review and explained video for House of the Dragon Episode 9. I'm giving it a rating of 8.5 out of 10. I will be doing a video on the finale and more after the episode airs, so stay tuned to my channel each week for breakdowns of the Game of Thrones spin-off. But to those who have already seen the episode, what are your thoughts on all the events that went down, and what do you think will happen in episode 10? Let me know down below in the comment section. For more videos on House of the Dragon, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.